J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon is re-entering the political fray with a new message to Democrats, grow up and listen to Trump supporters, because Trump was kind of right about some things. Here's Dimon at Davos talking to Democrats about how they need to sit down and shut up. People are growing. They're hungry to grow. They're innovating. It's, it's everywhere. It's not just Silicon Valley. So we've got this great hand. But when people say MAGA, they're actually looking at people voting for Trump and they think they're voting and they're basically scapegoating them that you are like him. Uh, and but I don't think they're voting for Trump because of his family values. Now, if you look, just take a step back, be honest. He was kind of right about NATO, kind of right about immigration. Mm -hmm. He grew the economy quite well. China, Trade, China ta virus. Tax reform worked. Yeah. He was right about some of China. I don't, th I don't like no, what he did. No, I said China virus. Yeah, I understand. When he, when he, yeah. he may have been right. He, he, and I don't like how he said things about I Mexico. I don't like. But he wasn't wrong about some of these critical issues. And that's why they're voting for him. And, and I think people should be a little more respectful of our fellow citizens. And when you guys have people up here, you should, have, you should always ask the why. Not like it's a binary thing. You're supporting right. Trump. You're not supporting Trump. Why are you supporting Trump? It's hard to hate Trump? 75 million of your fellow Americans. And it's, I, I agree. It's done quite and, I mean, you know, the it. Democrats have done a pretty good job with the deplorables, not, hugging onto their Bibles and their beer and their guns. I mean, really? Like, can we just stop that stuff and actually grow up and treat other people with respect and listen to them a little bit? Jimmy, and, and I do think the economy will affect. And I think this, this negative talk about MAGA is going to hurt Biden's election campaign. Friend of the show, Glenn Greenwald, weighed in, writing, For years, Barack Obama and Jamie Dimon were inseparable. The J.P. Morgan chair vocally supported Obama, and Obama frequently heaped praise on Dimon and acted to help J.P. Morgan. That's what makes these comments from Dimon about Trump and Trump supporters all the more remarkable. Indeed. I think this is one of those instances where you really see how superficial the sort of liberal pushback toward uh, Trump is. It was all about vibes. It's all about they thought he was impolitic. They didn't like how he sounded. It was awkward for them at parties and their liberal uh, elite backgrounds. But when it comes down to it, when they realize that he maintained, frankly, the economic and political status quo that existed before him, suddenly all of those concerns go out the window. Jamie Dimon and Bernie Sanders ended up in these kind of weird online wars back in 2020 because Bernie Sanders was advancing substantive uh, populist financial policy that would have actually hurt people like Jamie Dimon. He called him out for being fined $13 billion for mortgage fraud and illegally foreclosing on military families, bribing foreign officials, and receiving $416 billion in taxpayer money uh, in the 2008 bailouts. That was the kind of critique Bernie Sanders was making. And you're never going to see someone like Bernie and um, Jamie Dimon being best friends. But what you, will, what you will see is someone like Jamie Dimon saying, hey, at the end of the day, Trump isn't that much of a threat to the status quo. I think he's frankly right about the framing, as we talked about in an early er, segment, of not looping every Every conservative in under some MAGA umbrella to try to stigmatize them. And of course, he's right about Trump being right on trade and some of these other issues. But that has always been the case. And there have been politicians that weren't Donald Trump who were also right on trade, i.e., the kind of Bernie Trump mirror universes of each other that existed in the 2016 race. And someone like Jamie Dimon was never going to back a, 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 a kind of. Um, America first trade policy coming out of someone like Bernie, because at the end of the day, it came with too much of a threat to his own bottom line. So I would just take all of this with a little bit of a grain of salt. I thought I should remind our viewers what Donald Trump had to say about Jamie Dimon <laughs> as recently as November 30th of this past year. Highly overrated globalist Jamie Dimon, the CEO <laughs> of J.P. Morgan, is quietly pushing another non-MAGA person, Nikki Haley, for president. I've never been a big Jamie Dimon fan, but had to live with this guy when he came begging to the White House. I guess I don't have to live with him anymore, and that's a really good thing. Yeah. So there's... No, uh, no affection on uh, Trump's part, um, which speaks to this power Trump has that everyone is expected to treat him with kid, like very nicely and you can't lash out at him in anger or you're just like totally written off by all conservatives. But he can say whatever he wants about anyone else. <laughs> it's, uh, it's real funny. Um, uh, well, what other dynamic he's, is this? So, and and oh, Jamie Dimon is just to be clear, a, has endorsed Nikki Haley and is pushing for Nikki Haley. Um, so the Jamie Dimon type peoples are really who you yes, it's bring into the fold exactly. if you make Nikki Haley vice president. Yes, this is this is all about establishment preservation. Talking about this under a partisan lens really misses the key story here. One other aspect that is worth noting that is that in the last electoral cycle, and then apparently in this electoral cycle as well, there were rumors that Jamie Dimon might be seeking a run for office. This is from a Reuters report of May of last year. Um, he, uh, billionaire hedge fund manager Bill Ackman, 
he's everywhere. He's like the Forrest Gump of politics. And of course, Bill Ackman is the person who spearheaded the effort to get Claudine Gay ousted from uh, Harvard University and then later found out that his own wife was committing even worse plagiarism uh, than uh, what uh, Claudine Gay has been accused of. He uh, said Jamie Dimon should run for president back in last year. And Jamie Dimon responded saying, I love my country and maybe one day I'll serve my country in one capacity or another, he told Bloomberg News back then. So the kind of statement that he's making there, saying, hey, I'm a consensus person, I don't hate the MAGA people, I'm willing to bring the country together, definitely does smell to me like he's trying to lay the foundation for himself, not being the liberal bestie mm -hmm. of Barack Obama or a bailout king who's a billionaire who took billions from the American tax dollars after being part of a business that was part of the predatory campaign that caused the financial crisis to begin with. But hey, I'm a guy who understands um, progressive trade policies or, or more protectionist trade policies. I'm a guy who's willing to talk to anybody in America. Don't notice the billion dollars in my bank account. I'm really a man of the people. That seems to be the pitch that he's giving here. And, and again, a radical diversion from the way that he was talking back during the Obama era. Frankly, protectionist trade policies, um combined with bailouts for the super wealthy or for business in general is, for my mind, combining the worst of all my of all, all the policies out there. I don't want to see more protectionist trade policies. I don't want to see more micromanaging of businesses or more red tapes or any of that. I also don't want to see handouts or bailouts or preferential or special treatment. That's the problem with having these uh, very wealthy corporate people involved in our politics, because obviously, like, I, I, from a libertarian standpoint, I agree that I don't want the government to over meddle in business, and I want it to generally leave business alone in order to create a more prosperous um, conditions for, for everyone and jobs and everything that goes along with that. And, I, and for that reason, I think many, though not all Republicans, would be better choices than many, not all of Democrats. But I don't want to empower people who then are more, are better connected and are able to just pilfer. Um, as all of these um, CEOs were able to during the era of, era of bailouts, bailouts being only opposed by a sliver of the of the of the political class on both the right and the left. Your you know that's your where your far left people and my far right people come together to oppose that um, the duopoly. So it's. Um, Problem. Yeah. One other interesting aspect of Jamie Dimon coming into the political spotlight right now is, of course, the reason he's been in the press most frequently over the last couple of years is because of Epstein stuff. Right. Remember, J.P. Morgan is where Epstein banked. It's being sued in the Virgin Islands for facilitating uh, Epstein's cr sex crimes. When asked about this last year, uh, Jamie Dimon told CNBC that the lawsuits against the bank uh, related to his former client, the sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, have impacted its brand equity a little bit. He said, quote, but we banked Jeffrey Epstein, and I'm so sorry that we did. I wish we hadn't. Uh, had we known then what we know today, we obviously would have. And I think part of what's coming out in these Virgin Island right. uh, disputes is how much people high up in the bank had very close right. personal relationships with We have some emails now him. from people at J.P. Morgan following Jeffrey Epstein's uh, conviction being, you know, doing his time. I mean, I, it's very... He didn't do his time. He was right. under house arrest. But following that that kind of legal proceeding, eager to reconnect with right. him and talking Back in about some very, again, this is not Jamie Dimon himself. This right. is other officials at J.P. Morgan. I think they're under a lot of scrutiny deservedly for their connection to him, which we will continue to follow on this show. More rising right after this.